Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com. In today's video, we are going to be going through universal app campaigns on Google and how you can use Google Ads to promote your app on the Google Play Store or the iOS Store. Now this video will have a little bit of substance to it. I'm not going to be showing my camera like I typically do when I go through the interface itself. If you have any questions, make sure to use the chapters down below or check out the description below. I'm gonna have several links that you can refer to throughout this process. The entire purpose of this video is for you to get your app campaign live as fast as possible so you can start to promote your awesome app to the relevant user so you can get your app installed right away. Let's jump right into it. The first thing you are going to want to do is navigate over to Google Ads, go to the campaign section, and then click on the plus button here to go to new campaign. Once you land on the new campaign section, you are going to want to promote your app. So you can click on app promotion or you can just go to create a campaign without guidance. For purposes of this video, I'm going to go to App Promotion. You can then select the proper campaign subtype. So typically you are going to choose App Installs. However, you can choose to do App Engagement. The reason you would want to choose App Engagement over App Installs is if you want a specific action to happen within your app. For example, if you would like someone to make a purchase, click a certain deep link within your app, things like that. However, for purposes of this video, I just want users to download my app. That's all I want to do. And then I'm able to select my campaign. Now on Google ads, if you're making an app campaign, you have to have separate campaigns for Android and for iOS. So just keep that in mind because the ads look slightly different and the optimizations are slightly different. So for purposes of this video, I'm going to select the Android app here. And then all you have to do is look up your app. Now, in order for this to work, your app obviously needs to be on the iOS store or Google play store. So keep that in mind when designing these campaigns. I am going to look up the Costco app for the purposes of this video because, come on, you cannot get better than Costco, guys. Make sure you check out Costco today. Once you select that app, you can then go to continue. After going to this campaign, I am going to call this the Costco app campaign. Locations targeting is pretty straightforward. All the other campaign settings are going to be the same. I'll have a link in the upper right-hand corner of my screen right now for campaign settings. Make sure to check that out if you want to get into more detail. Since this is a, just a tutorial, I'm just going to leave a lot of these um, here. And then the thing I want to focus on, the main KPI that I'm going to have things focus on is just the amount of installs that happen. Again, if you have deep links and conversion actions set up, you can select these other options. I'll, again, check out the chapters down below if you want to jump to conversion actions. If you really want to optimize for conversions and sales, you're really going to want to select this action value. From a targeting standpoint, you can select uh, what type of users you want to install. By default, you have to select all users here. Again, if you have conversion tracking set up, you can target users who Google thinks is going to take an action within your app. And then you can also set aside how much you want to pay per install. So it's saying that a typical cost per install is about 26 cents. I can set that in here. I recommend when you first start out to leave this field blank and then to move to a target CPA as you continue to move forward. Just typically, you don't want to put something in here right off the bat unless you want to be very, very efficient right off the bat. And then what we can go ahead and do is just click Save and Continue. Now, after saving, we are going to have an ad group here. I'm just going to call this all users targeting because that is who I will be targeting. And then I can add in different headlines and descriptions. So what I went ahead and did is I just filled in some headlines and some descriptions here very briefly because this is how it will show um, in the preview section, which I'll be going through in a moment. One thing you have to keep in mind is you do have to select images. So you can either upload those images, you can go to your recent assets, or you can go to recently used which I have some examples here. Um, I'm just going to upload some images here. And you catch my drift here. You can use up to 20 images and make sure it's the proper sizing. So I'm gonna select that. And then you can also choose videos as well that go along with your app. And then HTML5, like uh, GIF, animated images, stuff like that. So now that I've created some headlines and some descriptions, you're going to see the automatic ads that are created here for display, search, YouTube, and then discovery campaigns. So one of the biggest areas that this is going to serve is going to be on the Google Play Store since that's what I'm targeting. And if you have looked on an Android phone before, you're just going to see the different placements that are available. So there's one area where it just shows at the way top of the screen when it shows when you're searching for apps. Another one for related apps for users that search for similar apps to the to the one that you're using. Um, and then obviously you just have additional placements. So here's what it would look like on display, search, YouTube. It all depends on the specific placements that you are targeting. So keep that in mind when optimizing these campaigns. When designing ad copy, one last note, I would highly recommend to fill out all the headlines, all the descriptions, as many images as you can. Just kind of 
overload this with information so you're giving Google just a ton of information at your disposal and then you can kind of test that as you move forward. And then when you click finish, you will be able to confirm that your campaign is done and good to go. So let's continue to the campaign. So now that our campaign is created, I'm going to pause it because I do not want to promote the Costco app because I do that enough of my day-to-day -day activities tonight, today, and I don't want to make sure I do that. Um, now that we have these campaigns up and running, you're going to want to set up conversion actions. So the nice thing is with Google Play apps by default, it's really easy to track conversions because... Google owns the Google Play Store, and then all the conversions are set up directly there. I'll have a link down below in the description on how you can track conversions on iOS. It's slightly different in the way that you hook things up. But if you go to the Tool and Settings section on the top of your page and then go to Conversions, you can then begin to set up conversion actions for your campaigns. And now, like I said, you can see by default, Google created this Costco wholesale install conversion because it can track that automatically. Now, if you go to plus conversion here, you can track more app conversions and you can choose through Firebase, Google Play, or third-party app analytics. So if you want to track iOS conversions, you can either do that through Firebase or through these third-party app analytics. Again, link will be down below in the description on how to go through detail to do those types of things. Um, you can also import conversions if you would like as well, but I would highly recommend to do this through GA4. Um, for Firebase or the third-party app analytics. And then when you start doing that, you can begin to optimize your campaigns for value or for specific actions within your app. And that's it. That is how you can create some universal app campaigns within 10 to 20 minutes on iOS or Google Play Store, and you can begin to track conversions. So this should be a really quick way for you to get things up and running and begin to measure results. If you have any questions, please make sure to let me know down below or click the link in the upper right-hand corner, which has my digital marketing Discord. Yes, there's a Discord where I am active on. There's about seven to eight people at this point who are active on the Discord community. Join us, and I would love to talk more digital marketing strategies with you. Until next time, appreciate you all. Talk to you later. Bye.